Welcome, welcome everybody back to another day here at the LCS Academy. I am Pyrotechnics. I'll be in the hosting role for today, and I'm joined by these two wonderful gentlemen. It's Cubby and Desrex. How are you doing, my dudes? Doing great. I'm glad that I have you again, Pyra. And then we have Desrex, whose internet is not failing him today. Uh, new location looking sharp, Eric. Glad you could join us. I'm trying to center up right now. I'm happy to be back. You know, no more lag. This time for real. This time for real. There's going to be no more lag. I, I, I know I said that before, but now I'm in a different location. So now we can actually guarantee it. But excited to be back after missing that last day due to unfortunate weather in Los Angeles. Yeah, I, I do apologize for uh, cursing you with our little segment <laughs> on the first day. But, you know, we got you back. It was only one. I got my news now. Tasters. We are getting ready to get into today's. Before we do get into our business, there's some other stuff I think we should really talk about, right? There is a lot of Path to LCS stuff happening on the horizon oh, yes. as well. PGCQ Summer Number 2 is coming up. The OQ is about to start. We get our reveal show on the 25th. That's only two days away. And then the Open Qualifier is happening just after that into the group stage and playoffs. Gentlemen, it is a very exciting thing. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm excited. Desirex, I know that you're still covering the AM scene uh, while I try and follow it. Uh, the team reveal show, OQ. It's wild how fast this split has been moving as we are not even halfway through the calendar year. And this is the last OQ that we're going to have for Amateur. It's crazy to think about. Final open qualifiers into the final circuit qualifiers, and you know the final storylines for proving grounds, which have been so exciting since the uh, first circuit qualifiers, the second uh, circuit qualifiers. I'm excited for some of the storylines that are going to be continuing. Uh, stuff like Merrillville's bounce back from that uh, first circuit qualifiers for the summer. So a lot of exciting, fun things to watch over in the proving grounds, and you know it's development in North America. Why not give it a watch? There's some lot. There's a lot of good stuff happening. And you know what I'm stoked about is the fact that we have some of our amateur selection committee members right here, not just on this broadcast, also over there on twitch.tv slash academy for our other stream. And yeah, I mean, we, we've got a, a, our very own Cubby is a part of that committee. How does how does that happen? How do you how do you get in there, Cubby? I need to know the secrets. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know how I got in there either, because uh, we all know that Mad Magical has the best takes when it comes to evaluating talent at this level. So oh, yeah. I'm really not surprised that Magical made it. I don't know how uh, Josh and I made it in, uh, but regardless, it's a good way for me to stay involved. And uh, hopefully I do a better job of uh, seeding the SoQ than, you know, not that I had a say in the last one, but I don't think people would have liked to say what I had in the last one. That, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Hmm, okay, so maybe a little controversy there. I don't know. Desrex, we're gonna be good for the next Cubby mentioned, yeah, he mentioned the OQ. I, I know, you know, you, you, you've definitely been a big uh, follower of the amateur scene. What, uh, what are you really looking forward to? What players, especially, are you looking forward to seeing in that OQ? Do, do you got to put me on this one because I don't know if broadcast is going to allow me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Big Ooh. Duck Energy. It's a, it's another team that's coming out. Into nice the pronunciation. Just a hilarious branding all the way through. I, I think Colthro has some involvement in that team. I'm still waiting for the roster to be revealed. But of course, you know, some of my old favorites, such as Winthrop, uh, always looking forward to how they're going to perform. DK Crew, who we saw in the last circuit qualifiers, get pretty high up there. Uh, Shut up and ask Slamma. Absolutely. Okay, well, I think there's a lot to look at. And I know we talked a little bit about the PGCQ. We talked a little bit about Amateur. But we are here for Academy. And I do think we want to talk a little bit about what happened yesterday. Because we had a couple of upsets. Uh, and most notably, Tim Liquid Honda dropped a game against Cloud9 with their full roster. I think we're going to look at how that one went down. Yeah, so this clip specifically is interesting because, yeah, I... We can't. We're gonna talk more about our both of our number one seeded teams uh, dropping games, but this one, I, I think a lot of games in Academy oftentimes boil down to uh, one or two mistakes that end up costing a lot. And in this case, Bradley is gonna go for a one v one in the top lane, uh, where they probably should just drop that wave and let Ezreal keep on getting free points bot and. This snowballs into more because since this happened, our Sham was able to get a reset. And then he goes down and 1v1's Yawn. If Yawn hits that Q, I actually think he could potentially win this 1v1, but it's still so difficult as Darshan's coming out of a base. Uh, Yawn's sitting on gold. He's down a level. It's GP versus Ezreal. Ends up dropping. And I, I think it's just something to look out for and be wary of is that sometimes a lot of Academy games boil down to one or two major mistakes that happen that give teams giant leads. 
That's sometimes why we see roller coaster games. We had uh, one yesterday, Pyra, uh, in our second series of the day. But I think it is just something to look out for and also something that we want to see the players improve upon because that's a mistake that Bradley shouldn't be making. He knows that, but uh, it is the biggest mistake that happened in that game that ended up costing TL Honda uh, a game in that series. Yeah, it it, uh, it was it was Team Liquid Honda firing a win back after the fact, of course. But that was also the first time we got to see Cloud9 Academy with their full roster back now that the main LCS roster has themselves all sorted out. And, you know, it seemed like there was a lot to like there, especially in that clip we were watching King pop off. I mean, hail to the king, right? Um, it, it's great seeing him back. It's a powerhouse of a bot lane that C9 now have uh, down there. So it, it, it's a tough bot lane to match. And now pretty much on all fronts, on every single lane for Cloud9, it's incredibly competitive. This is going to be a tough uh, team to beat. We were talking, I believe, yesterday about uh, feeling like they were made to take down Team Liquid. Well, they're putting their money where their mouth is. And as exciting as that matchup was, and as exciting as Team Liquid Honda versus FlyQuest is tomorrow... I think I also have to note, we do have C9 versus 100 Thieves tomorrow, who are the third team that is tied in first. So, could be a, a couple of really exciting Academy games we get to wrap up our Super Week. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're looking ahead, but we also have to look at today, too. And we yes. still have to talk a bit more about some of the other stuff tomorrow, because over on the other stream, of course, you know, there were other upsets. We actually got to see uh, EG Academy take a win against FlyQuest and make that end up being a 1-4-1. One yeah, and, you know, EG in this series, uh, this is a team where I, it always feels like they should be higher up in the standings than they are. I, I Kauri, again, one of the best marksmen that we have in all of Academy. Uh, Surti, someone that, you know, we oftentimes have pitched, uh, someone that we feel like could go to the next level. And I think this series especially was a great sign for Surti because game one, he got monstered by Kumo. He destroyed him in the Trinity Mirror versus Gangplank matchup. Kumo had a 14 KDA on the Trinity in that game and pretty much won the game for FlyQuest. But Surti, the bounce back, a player that I feel like it, we can get two different Surtis depending on which day it is. The fact that we got to see uh, two different Surtis in the same day uh, and have that be an improvement going into the second game, honestly, I think it's a, a nice sign of growth for Surti, a player that has struggled with some of that consistency. But we know how high his highs are. We really saw that in that game too. And him and Kauri really helped uh, pull EG over the edge and give them a win against, again, a team we had tied for first going into yesterday. Yeah, I, I think this is a team that uh, has has given us a lot of surprises. What what I mean, what would be the big takeaway on the FlyQuest side of things for either of you, like just based on what we saw in those clips, it does feel like that team, maybe with Kuma back on the roster, might have some cracks in the armor. Ooh, I, I think FlyQuest honestly played okay that game. I think the draft was hard to execute in Ezreal Karma and Kauri got ahead. Uh, but I still think Toma Diamond are a really strong bot lane. I, I, I don't know if, if you got any more to add, uh, Eric, but I, I, I have like a quick diagnosis on that one. I, I, my whole thing is just to focus onto the bot side. You're talking about Tomo Diamond. Uh, Yuji's focus onto that bot side does a lot for FlyQuest. Uh, that's the main thing I can really add on to this. Yeah. All right, still a lot of strength. I mean, that's that's a wrap-up from yesterday's games, some of the upsets we've had, but we do got to take a look ahead at our games today. We're going to get our schedule up on the screen for both of our streams, starting over on the Academy stream, twitch.tv slash Academy. We will start the day off with EG Academy versus Immortals. And, of course, TSM Academy takes on Team Liquid Honda. It's going to be a little bit later on in the day. And following through, 100 Thieves Academy and Golden Guardians Academy to close us out. If you want to watch all of that, once again, you can catch it on twitch.tv slash academy and get the full schedule and everything else on watch.lolesports.com. But if you want to keep it locked over on this channel, kick it with us. You can watch FlyQuest Academy take it on CLG Academy up first and then Dignitas and C9 to round out our day. I think that one's going to be a banger. I, I hope it is. Uh, I'm really looking forward to actually to Insanity versus Copy in that mid lane matchup and also Shaden versus Axew. I feel like the mid jungle duos for both those teams is really important uh, and want to see which one gets the best of the other. Ooh, man, I'm, I'm liking that one. Destrix, what have, what have, what have you got? What, what, is your, what is your hype game of the day and, and your matchup that you really want to see? I mean, my hype game of the day is already coming up. It's going to be CLG versus FlyQuest. So that's why I'm a little bit reserved Ooh, about saying okay. too much right now. Um, I think they're strong in very different areas, but we're going to get to that soon enough, Pyra. Okay. 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 All right. I'm, I'm curious now. So if there's anything else, I know, I know we have a few things on the other stream, of course. Any other games that you're going to be uh, chomping at the bit to scroll back and check out after today? 
Yeah, 100 Thieves are on a nine-game winning streak. Uh, and I it, it's also a Ray versus uh, his old org, which I think is kind of fun, uh, as he was, of course, 100 Thieves next, uh, as Deserex, of course, and hopefully most of our viewers who know from the last split. Uh, and I think Golden Guardians, I they only have one win on the board so far, but I am hoping that we see them continue to improve and at least be competitive. Uh, I think that we, again... They've dropped two tragic games. We saw one of them yesterday, Pyra. And I, I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, they can put some wins on the board. A win against 100 Thieves would be a big deal uh, as they have been on an absolute tear. Holy smokes, what Tenacity did, did yesterday was absolutely filthy on the Rift. My goodness. Yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm still recovering from it myself. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I went we, back and watched the VODs, and it was just like a, a Yone, like 1v9, and then a Fiora split push, like... <laughs> Just a dream scenario that Tenacity had. So, uh, really excited to see if he can continue his form. He's looked really good as he has returned to Academy. Absolutely. Now, if you want to follow along with all of the action and get involved with the conversation online, of course, we got our little socials channel. You can go ahead and hit at follow up path to LCS on Twitter for the updates. You can tweet at us. We maybe will take a look at them, talk about them. You never know. Get involved and uh, let your thoughts be heard. I'm always a big fan of that kind of stuff, especially when people have the spicy takes. Follow the socials. Talk about. Yeah, <laughs> we post ahead. everything there. We don't we have do. a YouTube we really, channel. It's, it's it, there's a lot of stuff. There's a yeah. lot of stuff that goes through for sure. But That's speaking of oh. any tone update, oh, yeah. that just uh, premiered Dude. yesterday. That's yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. If you want to take another look at that, socials are the place to be. Yeah, Desrex uh, makes a fantastic news anchor. That's, a good That's all I'm right going there. to say. Absolutely, I, I think he's a great <laughs> salesman too. I, and you know what? The great part is, you can wear the same tie for both. It was a good looking tie. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah, I mean, it looked good. It's my UCLA oh, approach. Goodness. That's what I go with. It. Oh, Ooh, I like okay. that. Yeah, I like that. Oh wow, what a what a consummate professional. I dig it. Although we're uh, we're we're packed to unrivals. I'll, that's uh, that's all I'll say about that. Anyways, I think we are about ready to get into our our start of the day officially. We're going to start talking about our first matchup here: CLG Academy taking on FlyQuest Academy coming up here on Path to LCS. So. I know we alluded to it a little bit, some of the results that happened, of course, yesterday. But FlyQuest Academy is still very much at the top of our standings, one of our teams in that top three conversation. Uh, both them and uh, Team Liquid dropped a game, which, uh, again, it's Academy. You know, our top dog had, uh, I think, a 65% win rate last split. So we expect some of the teams to drop games, and especially teams that are trying out things. And honestly, for FlyQuest, I felt like in their second game, that Talia mid uh, was more so them trying something. I, so I, I like to see FlyQuest kind of expand that strat book. Uh, but on the flip side, COG, I, Jenkins had a, a, a pretty tough series against Tenacity, who really got the best of them. Uh, I, I know I thought that Jenkins bounced back okay in game two, but the Fiora was still way too much as Tenacity had some really big plays. And I am looking forward to seeing if COG can bounce back and also looking forward to seeing how Meech and Breezy match up into this dominant bot lane for FlyQuest, Desirex. I know that's something you're excited about, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm very hyped up for both Meech and Breezy to take on Tomo and Diamond because I feel like this is going to be a very solid measuring stick for them. He's already gone against uh, BMFX and Instinct. Um, I don't think it's the highest level of competition yet. This is going to be a great standard for him to test himself. Absolutely. I, I think uh, on the opposite side, too, you know, this FlyQuest team to see how they end up matching up against. Meech has been an exciting one for me on the CLG side, but I think that bot lane is definitely going to be oh, a yeah. big one. Let's uh, let's get up that FlyQuest roster, see their opposition today, and who they are going to be playing against on the Rift. Let's so get that one up in just a sec. Uh, yeah. But this, this matchup is, I think this is pretty hype. You talked up Tomo and Diamond, and I think it's for a very good reason. Uh, I mean, it's not just Tomo and Diamond, because these two players, I still felt like were a strong point for FlyQuest in spring, uh, even though I think the entire team has leveled up their play, but especially Yuji and Spyrax. And again, these two guys, they have more room to grow. It was their first split of Academy last split, but to see where they were in spring compared to summer, it really feels like both have evolved into just significantly better players across the board. And that's why we're seeing FlyQuest compete at the top of the standings at the start of the split instead of scaling into the split, which has been really, really good to see. Uh, and I hope it continues today as Yuji, someone that I think has been having really good reads across the map. I think it's a big part of the reason that Spyrax and Tomo have been able to carry games because Yuji sacrificing more of his own gameplay to make sure that his lanes are in great state. Uh, and I think it's been paying off huge for FlyQuest. It's been paying off really well. You were talking about Yuji and Spyrax, that mid-jungle duo. Just how uh, 
how good they've been more centered towards the mid game than anything else when you're able to free Spyrax out from that mid lane. Uh, once they're able to get onto the map, what I've always noticed about FlyQuest, at least in these last couple of weeks, is they're really good at not just getting leads, but they're really good at closing out those leads when it comes to the mid game. Something a lot of teams tend to struggle with when it comes to mid game and late game macro. Yeah, I, I think it, that is interesting to point out too, because I, uh, yesterday I think they did have trouble closing out EG. Mm. So I, I want to see if they can improve upon that and take it in, into CLG, who have had a blistering early game to start off Academy, but have had some mid-game struggles. So I, I'm curious to see if CLG can fix those woes against a team that's very good at the later stages of the game, and curious also to see if, if uh, CLG can get those early leads they have been getting so far in the split against one of the stronger teams we have in the league. All right, and speaking of stronger teams, you talked about so many players that have so many strengths on this roster, but we do want to highlight one in particular. We are going to take a look at some of the highlights that we've seen from Diamond. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Diamond for us, it's a player where, you know, Diamond has been competing in Academy for a long time. I, I, he's won five Academy splits, but it, it feels like Diamond honestly is playing some of the better league I've seen him play in a long time this split as someone that is the leader of this roster. He, he is someone that I think has really stepped up into the mantle of him and Tomo. When they get ahead bot lane, their ability to shift around the map and have, like, the right rotations. It's the reason that FlyQuest are so good in the mid game because their bot lane is always in the right place at the right time. Time is able to support any play they want to go for. I think these guys have been playing really, really well to start off the split. Uh, and it's great to see Diamond, a player that we have seen compete now for eight years, still evolve, still find ways to get better, and not only improve himself, but also improve his team. Because there is not one individual we have in Academy that is more vocal in comms and has a higher percentage of comms than Diamond. This guy is always talking with his team, uh, and it's really good to see him not only up his team play, but also his individual play to start off the split. Yeah, it seems like the total package, right? Guiding the team to victory as well, uh, being a big shot caller for them. Another player that I think we want to talk about, too, has had much more of a recent splash on the opposite side is Meech, also down in the bot lane for CLG. What a start to this one. Yeah, I've been so excited for Meech to be a part of this team because with CLG, a lot of the focus has been topside for them and Rosethorn mm -hmm. kind of hovering around Jenkins getting those early Rift Heralds. Uh, Meech has been performing so well in these first four games when it comes to the early stages of this. Um, just being able to lane consistently and have uh, having these very aggressive plays when it comes to the mid game, being able to team fight in position without needing a front to back to really fight around. He will go ahead in front line. He's been a wild player to watch since his debut. It's only been four games in, but he's been looking so good. Uh, I, I love a couple of these clips. I know one that's not pictured. Uh, I don't know if we grabbed it or, or not or yet, but he had a Callista play that was nearly game-saving yesterday for CLG in the second game against 100 Thieves. It was uh, one of those team fights that was just absolutely wild, as uh, I, I'm really hoping that we get to see some of the same Meech that we saw I've seen play so far today. Again, against Tomo, who has been so good to start off this split. I thought he was the best-performing marksman in Week 2, uh, and I'm hoping that he continues that form here for Week 3. I think that bot lane is going to be quite explosive. Now, one thing I, I think we really did talk a lot about leading up into this week, especially looking at the form that CLG have had, not just in Academy, but also in the LCS, is that this is a squad that seemed to perform better than their LCS counterparts, with maybe the exception of uh, CLG's start in the LCS for Summer Split. Yeah, it's one where, you know, CLG as an org, keep in mind, they had to have a total turnaround. Uh, 2021 was not their year. Uh, they took 10th each uh, split of LCS. And Academy was also in 10th uh, each split. In fact, they didn't even qualify for the second Proving Grounds. They got knocked out early. So this really has been an entire organizational overhaul for the side of CLG. And the fact that they were first in Academy regular season, I know Proving Grounds didn't go the way they wanted to, but uh, still, Dokla stepped into the LCS team. And I think that Dokla has been fantastic uh, in this first week and will continue to be solid in the LCS as he's just better at playing lane than the majority of the top laners that we have, especially in the bottom of the league when it comes to LCS. But honestly, like taking a step back and looking at this org and how they've been able to turn things around, this is crazy. Like this is a team where I really feel like they could be a middle of the pack team in each league. And when you t think of that going from 10-10, in each league the year before. I think a lot of praise is deserved for the side of CLG. And honestly, uh, for FlyQuest too, because it's also an academy team that it feels like they've always outperformed in the standing compared to their LCS teams. They have a really good developmental uh, core system, staff, and roster. 
Yeah, I think you really can't take much away from them on that. And, you know, dialing it in specifically to the Academy roster who have been, you know, a little closer to that middle of the pack. Uh, Desirex, I know we highlighted Meech. Is there anyone else that really stands out as giving that team the success they've had so far? You know what? Um, I was just talking about it a little bit earlier, the top side of things. Uh, both Jenkins and Rosethorn. They've been phenomenal pieces. Mm -hmm. Rosethorn has great early game. If you watch a lot of CLG's early games, they're ahead a majority of the time. The trick for them has been that mid-game transition, but for the most part, it has been Rosethorn activating CLG in the early stages and activating Jenkins in the early stages on top of that because he hovers over towards that top side. I mean, in the 12 games that CLG has played so far, 11 of those first Rift Heralds have gone over to CLG, and a lot of those yes. have been placed towards the top side over with Jenkins. Wow, yeah, impressive early game stuff for sure. I know you were talking about how they can occasionally struggle as it goes on and on. What do you think of the missing pieces that they need to, to try and pick it up? What is the, the, the gameplay aspect that's been lacking? For the side of COG, it, it's it's mid-game. I, I, I know, We're going to talk about this more on the cast as, you know, Desirex is pairing up all the early game notes we have on COG. Uh, but they're second in the league when it comes to gold diff at 15. They are first when it comes to first turret rate and first three tower rate. But they're middle of the pack team. And, and a lot of that is just mid-game collapse, getting too far ahead of their shoelaces and kind of tripping up over themselves. I think they've taken a few engages where, yeah, the rest of the team can't support. I think they also do draft aggressive early game compositions, which plays into that a little bit. Uh, I know I wasn't a fan of the, the Blanc, Nar, plus Senna combo because that just lacks a ton of damage as the game goes on. So I, I think that for CLG, I, they do put this focus on early game. Uh, I like teams that do that. They make proactive plays, but they need to find ways to more consistently snowball that into the later stages. And I think a lot of that comes with how they play out that map in the mid-game and how they play around uh, Baron. They have to keep map control to like play around the Baron. Oftentimes, by that point, they're losing map control by just making big mistakes from that 15 to 20 minute mark. So we'll be something to keep our eyes out for. And I do think okay. CLG are a little bit better than they're given credit for. Uh, week one, it was just a bad performance. They didn't have their full roster. Everything's still trying to mend together. That's when they lost those uh, that, that entire series against IMT. But for the most part, it's been consistently good performances. They haven't taken another 0-2. Uh, the only time they did, it was against what is considered one of the best teams in the league right now against 100 Thieves. Uh, their track record so far has been okay. And as this uh, season develops, I still expect to see them somewhere in the top four of the standings. Okay, so you're not worried at all based on yesterday. I mean, I was I was about to ask, like, it is 100 Thieves Academy. Are you really, like, can you really take much away if you get 0 2 But so you're very confident. You have the faith is what you're saying, Desiree. Yeah, defend the faith. Hashtag defend the faith. Okay. All, about it. all right. Someone's got to send this man a jersey as well. Soon. Soon. It's coming. It's, so, it's, hey, they are, <laughs> they have got really, really cool uh, uh, jersey designs on the CLG camp. That has been something I've been seeing y'all yep. talk about on social media. Uh, really am appreciating that the CLG org support and fandom. It's, it's, it's such awesome. a great fit that Josh rocked it on broadcast yesterday. I He he just embraced being a, an unbiased, biased caster. Because, you know, <laughs> it looks biased, but it truly is unbiased because we will support anyone that sends us free merch. Of course. That's that's yeah. the true unbiased, you know? <laughs> How do you feel about that, Desirex? I know you and, uh, you and Josh have a pretty long history there. I, I'm, I'm the same way. I <laughs> one of The first team I ever casted for in Academy was Team yeah. Liquid. Yeah. yeah, I was instantly a Team Liquid fan and rooting for them. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm viable. Um, and if all <laughs> the other Academy teams are hearing that, um, just check my Twitter DMs. Go ahead and message me. I'll, I'll, take I'm viable. I'll wear them. I'll wear them. Hey, it's a gig economy. You got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, well, now that we've, uh, now that we've oh, aired man. all of that stuff out. Oh, man. So we talked a lot about how CLG Academy can, can fix things up for themselves going into the mid-game. But for FlyQuest Academy, I mean, they do come in here as the favorites. Are there any adjustments you expect them to make, or you just think that if they do everything to their game plan, they should be looking like the one's favored still? I I think the FlyQuest playing through bot is a way that they can consistently win more than 60% of their games in this league. Uh, and I don't think that COG's bot lane can hold up to that, especially if UG's going to really play around them. So I'm curious to see if I'm wrong. Uh, I think a couple big picks to look out for. One, Aphelios. It's contested, and Tomo is 5-0 and on that pick so far this split. And then another one is Azir, as Spyrax is 5-0 and on the Azir this split. Uh, so that he's won five out of the nine games for FlyQuest on that Azir. He's also one of Triple's better champions. I know that he had a tough performance on it the other day, but I'm hoping that we see uh, Triple and COG step up, and uh, this could be a close matchup. So hopefully COG can challenge him. 
All right. Well, maybe we can see those predictions come through. I'm here and Champ Select is ready. So Cubby and Deserux, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Pyra. And I am ready. CLG Academy versus FlyQuest Academy. And no joke, Cubby, I am actually more on the excited side for this one. I do think this is going to be a little bit more of a competitive matchup due to where the strengths are uh, comparing these two teams. I yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this matchup. As on the side of uh, CLG so far, I we were really hyping up this bot lane, and oh boy, a lot of bot lane bans so far at SRX. As we teased the Athelios wow. for Tomo, uh, already taken off the board, and honestly, tells me that CLG might be setting up for Callista. So I would not be surprised if FlyQuest uh, try to take that away, or maybe trade the Callista to pick up Yuji's Wukong, which has been really good for himself and FlyQuest so far this split. Now really, the only main marksman still up, Callista, as you mentioned. Ezreal is another one that's still on the table, but so many marksman bans coming out. Lucian, Aphelios, Zeri, Senna, all removed. CLG, the first pick. And Ezreal is something that Meech is not quite as known for, whereas Tomo actually is very much known for the Ezreal. So maybe that's the trade, even though I don't love Ezreal and the Callista. We'll see if Tomo and Diamond maybe have that up their sleeve. I did uh, tease the Azir before we hopped into this lobby as well, that's Rex. Look at that, on the ban list against Irax. I feel like he's earned that one. 5-0 with an 8.7 KDA, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Oh man, the Marksman bans are going to continue as Callista gets removed. As okay. well, instantly taken away by CLG, they're going to lock in that. And when it comes to Marksman, there really aren't too much left on the table. Zaya is one of the first one that comes to mind, but yeah, very congested. Kais is another one, though. You can play in Ezreal, so we'll see if FlyQuest ends up opting for this and a heavy dive composition. We saw Spawn play this really well yesterday uh, in the Dignitas versus Golden Guardians series, as it will be the Wukong. I think one of the reasons CLG didn't take that Wukong is that Rosethorn has actually been uh, very much preferring the Viego yeah. into it. It's, he has eight plays on it. He's five and three on the Viego, likes this matchup, and so uh, we'll be taking that yet again into Yuji. And we'll see if CLG decides to round out their bot lane or maybe blind pick one of their solo laners. We go for here. Viego and Ezreal so far for CLG. Could be Rakan or Tom Kench uh, for the side of Breezy. Could also grab the Karma if you want to just get that solid lane. Uh, definitely would be an option. To talk about blinding one of the solo laners. Triple always loves his the Blanc. Oh, yeah, okay. Left open. And this will be the second time that Jenkins is going to take this gangplank to the rift. Uh, locked in over for the top side. Jenkins will have that GP, the response out of FlyQuest. They can choose to go for the counter pick right here. They still got their solo lanes to go for, but support still left on the table on top of it. So, Kumo took the Trindamir in the Gangplank yesterday and destroyed Surti in that matchup. It was really good uh, for the side of FlyQuest. So, I am, since they opted to go for the Nautilus and took that away from the side, I should say secured that with the Kaisa. I expect CLG, they did their homework, they should be banning out Trindamir here against Kum uh, Kumo, as it will be Kale first. I think we're going to see Trindamir next. Expect maybe a Karma ban still. Uh, CLG does lack a little bit of engage. Uh, so, could be something that Breezy's looking for with the support role, but Karma, Ezreal is just a really good pairing. Uh, you can't use it to poke out the Kaisen and survive a lot of these Nautilus all ins. But with uh, FlyQuest opting to take their bot lane at this stage in the first round, uh, it does give them the option to ban away supports willy nilly, all for free. They did take away the Braum earlier, so trying to lower that pull that can contest this Kaisen Nautilus lane. I appreciate people banning Braum when they have Nautilus now. I think Braum is really really good in the nautilus and really got buffed from the durability patch as uh that passive he has winner's bite after level 11 it's a four second refresh in these longer team fights you can realistically stun someone twice in the same team fight uh go brom i'm always a brom fan uh did tease the trindamir uh being taken away here we'll see if kumo opts to counterpick the gangplank maybe they're going to save counterpick for spyrax uh, if they want to grab something like a victor you might have to pick that up now Going for the victor just yet. The hover on the Vladimir, and okay. that is going to be the lock-in for FlyQuest. Taking the Vladimir, uh, you do have the flexibility with this pick, so you're not exactly revealing your lane. You can flex this to top or mid and save that counter pick for the final. It's been a long time since we saw it top, but I appreciate your highlighting the mid Vladimir and Desirex. It's always been a favorite of mine, as I, I'm expecting Kumo to grab Ghost plus Ignite in this lane matchup, and it will be Twisted Fate, actually, for triple. So... 
A lot of globals uh, for CLG between the cannon barrage and uh, the port that Twist of Fate brings to the table. Breezy is going to opt for the strongest landing combo possible. Uh, grab the Renata, as that is a little bit of a better matchup into the Nautilus and good into the dive. So CL or on the side of FlyQuest, going to have to be really wary of the hostile takeover and the gold cards. If they step out of line, it will be a reset going over to Rosethorn. That could make the game hard. But for Spyrax, they already have a lot of magic damage between the Vladimir and the, the itty-bitty magic damage that Kaisa supplies. So Spyrax will be going for the hard counter. We'll be taking his Yasuo onto the rift for the second time this uh, series. And there's a lot of things that can work with it. Uh, Wukong and Nautilus. This year. The uh, split. Still get the knockups. Uh, you still have plenty of crowd control to set up that last breath. So, uh, Synergy coming out for FlyQuest to set up this Yasuo. Now, for CLG, I always love it when Triple has the Twisted Fate. It's one of the most fun things to watch him play. He's very, very quick on some of those gold cards. Uh, I forget which game it was. He has played it once during the regular season, but there were so many times where he just flicked a gold card last second before a Cyclone could come out from a Wukong and has saved CLG in so many team fights through uh, oh, yeah. cards like that. So. Uh, oh yeah, I think that was. I think they paired it up with Luger, one of the Luger games. It was uh, with Ophelios yeah, yeah. all week one. So good call. As triples twist of fate, always something he's been comfortable with. But I, I think on the side of CLG, we're seeing a big priority on the early game, making sure that they have uh, some push, can move triple around the map to go impact, especially the top lane. Whereas on the side of FlyQuest, I actually really like their draft. I think that Spyrax can win mid lane with the Yasuo and the Twist of Fate. That's a really difficult counter matchup to play. Uh, especially after the first three waves. Vlad and the GP, we've seen how that scales. Both those solo laners should be able to win both the side lanes, no matter who matches up with against them. So I think it's really important that COG puts this Vlad, puts this Yasuo behind, or else they're going to get 1-3-1 uh, in the mid game. And we know how good FlyQuest mid game is. So uh, we'll see if COG can contain that. All right, our first game of the day, CLG Academy versus FlyQuest Academy. And with this matchup now, I am looking at the bot lane once again. It will be the Ezreal paired along with the Renata into the Kaisa Nautilus matchup. So I'm curious to see how this is going to play out because we know what Yuji likes to play towards this bot side. Uh, he would very much love to have Tomo and Diamond have a very strong early lead against a, a well-performing bot lane in CLG when it comes to early games. Yeah, you got to believe that both of these uh, junglers are going to work their way bot. Just leave Vlad GP in isolation. Uh, even if I think getting Vladimir behind early could be valuable for the side of COG. As I, again, I really, really, really like FlyQuest Draft. I, it feels like they have the strongest jungler on the patch, and they countered all three carries for COG. So I, I think COG, they have to work together and use the early tools they have at level 6 mm -hmm. to get some sort of lead. If they do not, things are going to get really difficult for them throughout this game. They're just going to have to rely on gold cards, which FlyQuest have a lot of ways to deal with that between Windwall and and the pool for Kumo, the the clone for Yuji. Uh, we'll see if COG can get off to the races, as it is actually going to be a mirrored start for the junglers. So Rosethorn will be spotted here in a second, as he gets a big leash. We'll be working his way up towards that top side, so trying to impact the matchup uh, in favor of Jenkins. Yuji still pathing the way we expect him to path, always towards the bot side. Always taking that route to try and influence down there, so uh, Rosethorn with the influence on the top. UG with the influence on the bottom. And for Jenkins, I, I know that you were really highlighting Jenkins, Deserex, someone that has stepped in the COG. I think it's worth noting, he is third in gold differential uh, at 10 out of all top winners, sitting at plus 198. I think Jenkins has been playing well at the start of the season. Tenacity definitely got the best of him yesterday. Jenkins would probably say that too, but good opportunity to bounce back from someone that he would have had LCS time against the last split in Kumo. I really do wonder how things are going to shape up in the future uh, once Kevy is able to join, because I really do like this pairing of Rosethorn and Jenkins over on this top side for CLG. They've worked so well together when it comes to balancing a lot of that priority to get those early Rift Heralds, and uh, acquiring early plates for Jenkins and CLG's top side has been really standard play for them. Something again, COG has been very successful at second best early game we have in the academy early season. Uh, and a lot of that is the priority they put on the Rift Herald and taking down those structures first, as uh, they've been the best team at taking down early structures. So, see if they can, get, can continue. Because at the moment, Rose Thorn gonna try and see if he can catch Spyrax going a little bit too aggressive, as 
Diamond, actually, because of the wave crash, is hovering mid. It looks like it's just going to result in both junglers getting their first crab uncontested. Yeah, so nothing too spicy in the early game. Diamond's still trying to set up over here, but utilizing that wave crash. Oh, hold on. This could be really clever. Alongside Yuji, Diamond together. Hook comes out, Ooh. lands on the Breezy, but not going to pull him all the way thanks to the terrain being there. That's some fun Nautilus mechanics. The the fact the hook lands and then you don't get to fully uh, walk forward because of the terrain. Should Good times for that champion. Should play Blitzcrank. Oh, dude, Blitzcrank's getting some fat buffs next patch too. I'm really hyped. And Magical's gonna be really hyped. I know he loves yeah, that champion. Yeah, a lot of base damage. I I am a big fan of Blitzcrank. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think that you can play it in the Nautilus matchup too. Fun, uh, fun times. Favorite Blitz player. Favorite Blitz player? Yeah. Just put me on the spot. On the spot. Oh, it's honestly, it's Diamond, man. Diamond's Blitzcrank was sweet last split. I mean, historically, you gotta go with Mad Life, but yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's uh, keeping it relevant to Academy, not going to oh, the yeah. easy route. <laughs> Diamond and Chime were both playing Blitzcrank into Thresh, and it was lit. I, I was a huge fan of that matchup. I, I thought it was really good. Uh, but we will see. Uh, so far, Wayne's are pretty quiet. I Again, I feel like this favors FlyQuest, uh, but... To be fair to CLG, they're really waiting for level 6 to start to get explosive around the rift. Diamond out with the hook. It lands onto Meech. So a little bit of a skirmish going to come out. Handshake pulls Diamond back in. Diamond getting low. Meech is looking to take first blood. He will claim it against the fly quest bot lane. It is a measuring stick. Oh. He is going to meet it with a double kill. And I'm surprised that Diamond went for that. He would have thought that it was split. But, man, the fact that Meech had a level that had the wave... Big mistake from the FlyQuest bot lane that has been so solid to start off this split, and now a huge lead for Meech on this Ezreal. A great start coming out from Meech, and it was all off a play that Diamond made looking for the engage right there. I mean, yeah, it's that, but also the level diff for Meech. Again, levels more valuable on this patch, and especially for Ezreal, who is somewhat of a caster. Uh, you know, being a mage, throwing out those Qs, get a bonus point in the Q. That's a big deal early, and I think was the big difference in making sure that Ezreal could win out on that 2v2. Big play coming out from the bot lane to CLG. And look at Meech's inventory. He feels great to start. Looks like it's going to be a Trinity Force uh, game. I, I must say, i not a huge fan of the Trinity Force. I, I feel like the Essence Reaver, you know, you are going to be poking more. is a lot more valuable. But, hey, Meech is ahead in gold, and we'll see if he can put it to best use. Meech in a lot of these high-pressure situations has been performing, and a lot of it has been Breezy being on this Renata. Uh, Meech knows how to play with Bailout. Uh, I've seen it before, where <laughs> uh, it was the game with uh, 100 Thieves, where he just ran through and still got a double kill when he was 2v1-ing and getting chased down in the mid lane late into it. You, you just saw it on display right there, where he utilizes the Bailout, gets the kill on Diamond. Okay, I'm bailed out. Let's continue the fight. I just love that phrasing, where it's like... This player's better when they're allowed to int. <laughs> with, with the bailout. Like, just go in and die, man. We, we got your back. Uh, but hey, to be fair to me, that was calculated as uh, him and Breezy making it happen in that bot lane. Uh, something we were asking for early. Uh, Meech and Breezy stepping up to the mantle of going up against a bot lane like Tomo and Diamond that have played together uh, for a couple splits now are one of the stronger bot lanes that we have in the league. Mistake from Diamond. Great punish from CLG. Good start for them. Now, as we head towards the seventh minute of the game, nothing too much to happen after that little skirmish that broke out towards the bottom side. Rosethorn still pathing towards his bottom lane, but he does have his top side camps now coming up quite soon. Uh, working towards his bot lane is going to be Yuji. As more Fog of War. No, Yuji over towards the top side. Excuse me on that one. As he farms up over there, I'm still looking at that Rift Herald timer that CLG likes to play to, and with the camps mm -hmm. spawning in the uh, order that they are, Rosethorn should be able to make it towards that side. Yeah, so off that bot lane 2v2, when Meech and Breezy did crash and reset, Yuji did sneak in that dragon. Uh, that's something really nice you can do whenever you start topside. Uh, if you're pretty much full clearing, uh, halfway through the second full clear, that's when dragon spawns, you're there. So Yuji taking advantage of that window. Uh, and now we'll see if COG can take advantage of that Rift Herald window as we are 10 seconds out. Bot lane does have push. See if they send Meech and or Breezy to rotate. As at the moment, I do want to see if FlyQuest set up a play mid. Because one way to make sure Triple cannot get out on the Rift is to attack him. And at the moment, Spyrax is doing a good job of slow pushing this wave, managing it. And making sure that TF has to stay under tower here. As we'll see if he takes a free reset or ends up making a roam. 
And it will be that big wave that he's crashed, and it looks like FlyQuest has a setup on this early rift. Yeah, FlyQuest, Yuji pathed over towards his Raptors and then backed off, uh, realizing that he was matching oh, they can't do this. Rose Thorn. Has priority in the mid lane, has priority towards the top side. They already called Diamond in. So yeah, Diamond's here. Yeah, this is a quick call coming out, oh. but Rose Thorn's gonna go for it, looking to try and get the steal away. On to Yuji he goes. Breezy will secure that kill. Looking for more. Jenkins now on to Kumo. Few more autos should do it in CLG. They pull the trigger, they get the engage, two kills acquired, but FlyQuest still get the Herald. I mean, it's no Rift Herald, but I think that's well worth it for the side of COG, as one of the big things, Kumo didn't base yet. He didn't have items for that play, so... Uh, because Jenkins has that teleport, had a couple bases under his belt, he is just way ahead of the Vladimir, who was really useless in that fight. Uh, FlyQuest got split around the Rift Herald, thanks to how COG played that out. And good flanks from COG is uh, they're up 4-0. We talked about how good their early game is. They're averaging almost a 2k goal differential at 15. We're 10 minutes in. They're already up 2k. Taking a look at this fight, Yuji couldn't even get the Cyclone off. The mm -hmm. engage too fast, the damage too fast. Overall, CLG just getting the engage off of that one. Getting a net lead once again. True Shot Barrage goes out. Oh. Tomo. Whew, nine health remains. Single digit as he'll take his recall. Yeah, sitting on two health potions, but knows he can't use those. It's now Yuji. We'll see how aggressive Yuji plays this. He's with Diamond. Diamond does have level five. Cyclone. Will they fully commit? Not going for it. There's the Cyclone. It's on to Meech. Good amount of damage on to Meech, but only has the Sheen. No Sunder picked up, so not hmm. enough damage on Yuji. Cyclone going to be used just to clear the wave. And a flash down for Yuji, as Meech was able to get out for free. So well played again by Meech and Breezy. Very strong to start off this game, especially Breezy had the roam to the Rift Herald. Big part of the reason they were able to win out on that play heavily. 1-0-3 and three from the support of CLG, making it happen in lane and outside of lane. What we'd love to see. CLG with a pretty strong start, 2k lead coming out for CLG as the dragon spawning in the next 30 seconds will be an infernal drake and watching where that priority does go you still have pathing coming out from Rose Thorn who's headed towards that side of the map and the dual roam from CLG to secure this vision to set up for this drake in the next 20. CLG would be nice for them to deny the stacking from FlyQuest just take a little bit of pressure off them and uh, again CLG is a comp that we expect they have to play this game faster uh, as we kind of check in on where things are, we are at the point where these solo laners are going to start to win hard for FlyQuest is Spyrax. Oh, going golden. Oh, he wins this. Triple. Oh, Ooh. beautiful timing out of Spyrax to take down triple. Oh, my lord. Pixel perfect from Ooh. Spyrax as he nets the empowered Q on the Twisted Fate. That was beautiful from the Yasuo. I think CLG still gets the dragon, but again, FlyQuest, these are big plays for them. They forced Jenkins out. Off the wave top, they're going to crash that Herald. Kumo is now injected with gold. Spyrax has a huge lead in the soul lane match in the mid lane. And while FlyQuest are down, they're the team that scales, and they're the ones that are checking the boxes that they need to hit the mid game and late game spike hard, which is really stretch out the map with the 1-3-1. Make sure that TF doesn't have any successful lanes to attack. If they get their soul laners ahead, that's where FlyQuest feel good. And it's really important that FlyQuest are able to pick those up, as now they might be looking for more. Yuji's here. Yeah, Hemo play goes off. Cannon Barrage being used now. It's going to be very hard to dive, Jenkins, as he'll flash away. Here comes oh. Triple. Gold card going to land on to Yuji. Throws out the pick of cards. Still waiting for more. Yuji now Yuji? coming out of the bushes. Goes after Jenkins. Jenkins Yuji. solo will get taken down. Yuji, realizing his life was forfeit, wants to take one with him, and he will claim Jenkins. But Rosethorn is now looking at this oh, bot nice. lane. Handshake goes off. A nice killer instinct to dodge the hostile takeover. But here comes Rosethorn. Dives onto Tomo. Meech able to finish off the kill. Diamond will Ooh. get away, but his bot laner just went down. Okay, I... Again, really big for CLG. We've talked about how FlyQuest, their soul laners, need to get ahead. Meech is the one that can break that. The range on the Ezreal, if he is ahead of the power curve, he can land the poke, make sure that CLG can net the early game objective control that they need to continue to stack up these dragons. They did drop the one. They did pick up the second. We do have an Ocean Soul on the Rift, so that could be very nice for CLG. But Meech is the star. He is 3-0, and he needs to make sure that he's carrying his team because Jenkins triple... 
in isolation in these side lanes, they will not win against either of the side laners of FlyQuest. So even more important than Meech, can perform, can do work. It's a tall task this game, but he has to be up to it if CLG want a good chance to win. And it's a power point coming out for CLG because look at the Mythics now completed. Meech has his Trinity Force triple, has the Everfrost. Yep. Opposite side of things, FlyQuest are not in fighting condition. Luckily for them, there's not too much to force them into that situation right now. Uh, given that there are no neutral stuff, Harold was already taken. Dragon just got taken away as well. Uh, nothing to contest too strongly. So FlyQuest can wait this out till they get those Mythics in that power spike. Uh, Tomo's in trouble. FlyQuest have complete control over the top side of the map. CLG has split it with the bot side, as both uh, sidelanders might be in trouble. Jenkins doesn't have Flash or Alt this time. I think he's going down. Yeah, another Hemo Plague to come out. Cyclone onto Jenkins. He will buy a lot of time. He hasn't gone down just yet. Yuji has to return, but the tower does fall. It took them a while, but FlyQuest able to get that brick, able to grab Jenkins. I think a smart base from Tomo. He's going to drop a couple waves for this, but does not seed his life. Knowing that COG triple had the port up, if he stays under that tower, he's dead right now. So I, I think Tomo resetting there was smart as FlyQuest fighting back a little bit. Attacking these side laners is going to be really big for them. Again, Yasuo Vladimir will win into both Gangplank and Sister Fate. Doesn't matter who's matching. So I, I think it's really important that FlyQuest have gotten gold now on both of their solo laners. COG have matched with gold on Meech. We'll see what Meech can do. Especially delaying a lot of that uh, scaling that you get from Gangplank. Two deaths already to Jenkins. He's been struggling over there, out CS. And I mean, you do get the bonus gold out of Parlay, so for him to be 1k behind is a pretty good plan of attack coming out from Yuji and FlyQuest. Yeah, and of course Gangplank does scale. Gangplank is always going to be useful in these teamfights. And Jenkins does have the opportunity to break the game in the team fights. But if I'm FlyQuest, I don't want to give COG the team fights for free, right? I, I want to play towards these sides. I want to make sure that no one can deal with my Vlad or Yasuo. And if they do try to deal with the Vlad or the Yasuo, they have to send three because I can get something else elsewhere. So uh, I, I think this will be the game plan for FlyQuest moving forward. And honestly, all eyes on COG and the port. So far, I think FlyQuest has done a nice job of being respectful of the fact that Twist of Fate does have that ultimate available to them. You can see when they are pushing lanes, it's when TF is showing elsewhere. So TF showing top right now, that means that Tomo can shove out the bot lane. This is really good stuff from FlyQuest. Shoving out the bot lane, getting Yuji into that bot jungle, but Rosethorn responds with Herald. Uh, going over there, Jenkins could really use it after all of that, uh, all of that company that was supplied by Yuji over on that top side. Yeah. Uh, triple just yeah, uh, it, it was like when, you know, the relatives that you don't like come over. The in-laws? Oh, I, I'm sorry if that's the, the case for you, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not been a fun day. <laughs> the Jenkins household has seen better days. <laughs> uh, we'll see if he can get back at the in-laws later. Uh, does have the op of course Gangplank. You can always team fight. Uh, but Just hey, two levels down to Kumo. Legends. Yeah, one two levels one. down to Kumo is tough. Uh, still holding position over here is going to be FlyQuest on this bottom side. Harold was already acquired earlier by Rosethorn, but CLG are playing towards the top side of the map. Not even going to bat an eye towards this dragon mm. that FlyQuest are taking. Rosethorn now passing northbound. And this means that the dragon stacking condition for CLG is pretty much uh, done and dusted. As I, I think, again, if the game goes that way, they'll they'll be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, Vladimir, not fun to team fight against once he gets two plus items. Uh, the only, only saving grace again is Ezreal can run away and Gangplank, if he's able to connect some barrels, he can try and control the Vlad. But we'll see if Kumo can pick those big angles to make sure that he's being as effective as possible. And this is the mid-game for COG where we were kind of asking for them to make a couple improvements as they are one of, uh, I'd say, their real strengths in the first 15 minutes. And then from there, we've seen them somewhat fall off as a team, some of these games. I'd say trading for gold, it, it's it's okay. But again, you, you don't have the dragon stacking... Uh, option now. It, you, you have to find a different way to win this game. So, I, I want to see if honestly, I try and do something crazy, like keep triple mid, put Meech and Breezy in a side lane, and then have triple go port uh, to whatever side lane you put Meech and Breezy in. That might be a way to three uh, wave stat, or a three man someone at a good timer, where there's no objective on the map, as Baron won't be spawning for another two minutes. 
and Dragon's four minutes away. So we're gonna have a little bit of dead time here on the Rift, but I think it is a, a time where COG can try and make a couple plays, get some more gold in their pockets. The next couple of minutes is more about setup than it is uh, the actual fight, actual competition. You're waiting for the next big team fight to come out. So getting into the best position possible to handle that will be key for these next couple of minutes as resets are coming through. Uh, Matamira now finished for Meech, who's gone 3-0 so far in this game. Having a pretty good standing as we head into the mid game. He will be one of those big ones to watch, especially Ezreal. These team fights are slightly longer now, so landing more and more of those Mystic shots are going to be huge. And Meech so far has performed in these uh, tight scenarios where you need to clutch out a team fight. Yeah, and I, I know that for Meech, again, like. This is his first split of Academy. People were calling for him to get promoted sooner. I know from talking with Meech, he's just thrilled to be here. I mean, it, it's been a long time dream for a lot of these guys, but it's, it is really the first step. Uh, and I know it's something that Meech was talking about before the game. He wants his team and himself to play with more confidence. Uh, and that's something I really like to hear from someone who's young. Because Meech, if, if you think of his games from amateur, this guy is a confidence player. When Meech is at his best, it is when he is stepping up, going in with these long-range uh, marksmen. Uh, of course, Ezreal... Isn't the Aphelios, isn't the Jinx we've seen Meech have so much success on, not only last put, but historically, but a marksman where Meech can step up and carry. And I, I want to see if he's able to play with that same confidence that uh, he feels like he can bring to the table. Two minutes until the next dragon will hit the rift. Still have 20 seconds before Baron. The focus of play from Yuji is now going towards the bottom side of this map where Jenkins has been aggressed on many, many times, and uh, he tried to get away with it, tried to get away from it Good flash. over on the top side, but they ah. will follow him on any lane he goes. Jenkins getting dived once again by the duo of FlyQuest in the top and jungle. It's so difficult against Vlad, especially once the Vlad gets ahead, yeah. as we're going to see COG at least try and answer with a mid-outer. Good use of Shelly. As, oh, triples porting. Yuji's caught. Yeah, forced out the hook there. Gold card comes out. Everfrost, oh, the combo of CC, returned with a Cyclone. But over the wall is going to come Rosethorn, another Cyclone. Now Rosethorn wishing he didn't take that jump. It's looking like a one-way trip. Meech will find an assassination onto Tomo, though. Still waiting for that cooldown. Oh, God, Rosethorn, oh. he's still in there. Rosethorn's still in there. He got a kill and he got a reset. He will take one Meech. with him, and Meech follows through with a shutdown onto Yuji, but he is not done. Looking to challenge onto Como. Meech. Another Mystic Shot is going to land. Meech is pursuing. Meech looking for more. Will use the plant to scry him out, but can't find much else. Gets caught, goes over the wall with the arcade shift. My god, Meech. My god, he is bloodthirsty. Meech turned that play around. We were asking for Meech to step up. He's the one that has the gold. He's the one that can break the comp four fly quest. And Meech moving forward gives CLG the team fight win, gives them this mid outer turret, and gives them a chance to contest, contest the next dragon if they so choose. Meech 5-0-1. Able to show up big time in that last fight. Rosar, especially being trapped there for so long and just getting one kill before that really started off. A wild little skirmish right there, but ultimately CLG coming out ahead in it when we got 15 seconds before the Ocean Drake spawns, and that will put a Dragon Soul point one point closer for FlyQuest. Oh, Meech played that so well. And, and now a lot of sums are down for this team fight. UG, Spyrax, each, or none have Flash. Meech does not either. We'll see if either team can punish. Triple doesn't have Flash. That is one where, you know, you can... Find plays for free as now Destiny is used. You can use it to scout the Vladimir. And we'll see if they send anyone to Mark Vlad as Jenkins. Now has to retreat. Make sure that Kumo can't cross that area. Nice play from Jenkins. And now we'll just see what Meech can do. The more they stall it, the more damage Meech can put down. That's good for the side of CLG. By time. By time if you're CLG. You're still waiting for Hostel. Oh, Take they're going. Off, pull down. But there's the last breath. Going on the back oh, line. What a oh, combo. Wombo combo coming out from FlyQuest. It'll keep knocking him up and putting oh. him down. But the return of damage Breezy. is too big from Breezy, from Jenkins, from Triple as a double kill gets picked up by Triple. And CLG, they got hit with the kitchen sink and they still bring it back. It was a sweet engage from FlyQuest, but Breezy turns all of FlyQuest against themselves with that hostile takeover. That was massive. That was game-saving for the side of CLG. 
is now. Oh, not Kumo as well. Kumo with a big heal there, but the gold card's gonna land. Tomo's running low. This would be a big stagger on the death timers. Kumo's still going in. He's able to take one oh. with him, but it's two down for FlyQuest on a massive stagger at the death timer. It is gonna delay the Drake, though, and might actually stop the Drake. No way. Fly no way. They were able to stop it. I, I, I know it's a one for two. I think that's worth FlyQuest. Uh, we might just see this again, Deserex, as... What a crazy fight. Again, the Wombo combo from Time and Yuji, it was so good, but they were not able to keep Breezy up in the air long enough as Breezy hits a massive hostile takeover. We've been hyping up Meech so much, but look at Breezy on the scoreboard, man. 1-0-12, that ult was so clutch in the last fight. COG are able to reset, get this dragon first, and COG growing that gold lead, keeping their hopes alive as we take a second look. It's a good attempt from Diamond, but once Breezy lands, he presses R. And watch how FlyQuest just shred themselves with this hostile takeover. Tomo takes Diamond to half. Tomo then cannot move. Spyrax is taken down while all this is going on because they're attacking each other instead of the other team. And it's massive for the side of COG. And I want to point out, that fight, if it was any sooner on Engage coming out from FlyQuest, that could have very much been FlyQuest's fight because Breezy did not have hostile takeover. When he used it, he used it as it came mm. off cooldown, Cubby. Oh man, I didn't even catch that. That, that. That's an even closer fight then, and well played to Breezy though. Uh, getting that alt up, pressing R at the perfect time. FlyQuest weren't able to pull the trigger. And COG, they turn it around. 3k Goldie, dragons are even. I still really like FlyQuest comp if they stick to the side lanes. I think Vladimir Yasuo are really strong, but look at where they are on the map at the moment. Vlad isn't past River. Spyrax was hovering mid. FlyQuest were looking to maybe maybe you make a quick play while a lot of the cooldowns were still down. And if they aren't living in the side lanes, that's when Meech just gets to keep on peppering you with Mystic shots and keep that mid lane shove. That's this is where FlyQuest are gonna lose a lot of map control. And Meech establishing that map control into the mid lane now, shoving in that wave as the rest of CLG hover around Baron. You have triple in the top lane. Destiny Gate, you can get there no problem. Teleport going to be available as well. So uh, much more side lane pressure that FlyQuest are going to have to deal with. Still trying to shove mm -hmm. CLG out of this Baron control that they're getting. But CLG can quickly just shove out those waves and go back to denying that vision, clearing out those wards. And honestly, for the side of CLG, I, if you're a team that is kind of struggling with your uh, mid to late game, I actually think Ezreal is a great pick for those types of teams. Because Ezreal... You just guarantee that you have mid-shove. It, 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 even if it's like an even game, and if you're a little bit behind, uh, the fact that you have these Mystic Shots to just spam at the wave, you can see Meech going for that Tiamat third to make sure that he has even more wave clear to make sure that FlyQuest are always spotted under their own turrets. Uh, it can really help make sure that you are able to overextend because you always have mid lane priority. That's exactly what's happening with COG right now. With all that control... Not much of an answer really found by FlyQuest. Kumo now taking his recalls. Jenkins continues the side lane push there. Uh, Kumo does not have teleport on top of that. So Jenkins does have that pressure, both with the cannon barrage and his own teleport, if uh, CLG are to contest some of these Baron plays. And you can tell that's what CLG want to do. They're trying to set up the side lanes right now. Looking to get that control. Triple over on the top side. Jenkins and mm -hmm. the bot side. Everyone else just hovering between those two lanes. And I like how Triple just being very... Res uh, paying a lot of respect to the side of FlyQuest as no one was showing on the sides. Knows that if he overextends past River, that's where things can get dangerous. As the Execute with the Yasuo, with the Vladimir in the side lane, still so strong for the side of FlyQuest. But COG not giving them any windows. And with Tomo always being spotted mid, uh, COG knows that if they attempt to make a play in any of these sides, they will be up a member. Because Meech can rotate, Tomo cannot. So again, I, I think this is a really good answer, good play. Uh, the COG has had into what... Uh, they always have had a lead in this game, but again, I feel like FlyQuest has had uh, win cons that were in a decent position. Uh, and I think the COG it, is played pretty well in, into those win cons as this game's move on. The biggest thing to me is Jenkins still exists. After everything <laughs> that FlyQuest did, Jenkins oh, still exists spotted. in the bot lane, but look at this call coming up from CLG. We're going to start up the Baron now. FlyQuest trying to respond. You just here in time. Uh, Carb was just used. Or COG just gonna go? Okay. They're going for this. They're going for this. Trying to get the steal. Oh, He's able man. to steal it. UG gets the Baron in. CLG are empty-handed right now, but they don't want to leave that way. They want to pick up something. They're only grabbing Diamond. They're only grabbing the support, but what a steal coming out from UG. Man.
COG were doing such good work this game, and then they just try and flip the Baron like that. Yuji takes it away from Rose Thorn, and just like that, a lot of that good work gets dropped to the wayside as COG lose a bit of map control. And FlyQuest should be able to reset to see if they can contest for Soul Point for either team. Diamond will be late. COG has full control, but FlyQuest are coming out of base with their inventories replenished and with Baron buff on their shoulders. The coin flip unsuccessful for CLG. Oh, man. Now Breezy with the pull in, looks for Kumo. Kumo getting locked down. Everfrost goes out. It's a pit coming out for CLG. And that should be pull. enough to secure the dragon priority going over to CLG. Not much of a team fight left when you lose your Vladimir. I don't think he saw Twisted Fate over the wall. I, I, I think that there was a gap in vision. He just didn't see the gold card coming in. Kumo doesn't react. He goes down and uh, just like that, CLG pick up drag. Easy dragon being picked up by CLG will put them at sole point. So that uh, condition that we weren't expecting for CLG to have a win con around that dragon is getting closer at least to becoming a reality. They brought so it back. A while. They are able to bring it back just like FlyQuest brought back that Baron Steel. It was good to use some map control there. I, I think that that was a pretty tough mistake from Kumo. But still, triple, I'll give him some credit. That was RFC gold card over a wall. Kind of hard to see that. Uh, half the time that gold card's traveling, you can't see it in, in the terrain. So, nice vision play there from triple. Uh, we'll see if FlyQuest, again, can utilize some of the strength of their composition. And to me, that really is this Yasuo in the side lane. Vladimir can shove with impunity as well. But I, I think Yasuo is the person that FlyQuest can make plays around. Of course, Infinity Edge now completed. Uh, that's the Yasuo power spike you'd love to see. As now FlyQuest, they have been able to fight for some mid lane priority. Mish was on a reset. FlyQuest going to use this to try and attack the spot out of turret. It will be theirs. Yeah, Jenkins just has to leave. No reason to contest that. Already so much was forfeited to FlyQuest off of that Baron earlier. Now side lane controls so strongly in the hands of FlyQuest thanks to this Baron empowered siege. Uh, Jenkins oh. still trying to respond here. The so Camberage Spyrax. is going to go out. A team fight's breaking in. And now Spyrax oh, with Spyrax. the last breath jumps all the way to Rose Thorn. Rose Thorn will still pop the ultimate, able to get the knock up on Rose Thorn. Trying to keep Rose Thorn alive. He can't get the kill in time. Kumo will take him down. And CLG, they've just lost their jungler. I gotta be honest, I don't even know how that fight started in the jungle because I was just watching Spyrax. All of a sudden, Spyrax jumped like 2k units to join his team over the wall. Big brain, big brain play from FlyQuest as now they have a 5v4 and this inhibitor turret should fall. Triple. Hook. Triple. Oh, triple's dead. Bad place to be. Has no, oh, no. sums left. Oh, no. Even if he tried with the flash, he was not escaping that one. FlyQuest with the pick on the mid lane. They will get the inhibitor. And as we get into the late stages of this, it's suddenly FlyQuest that's in the driver's seat. Yeah, I, I gotta say, both these teams making some pretty big mistakes uh, as we move on on throughout this game. Kumo getting caught from that dragon, not good. Triple getting caught there, not good. Uh, as, man, I, I gotta say though, FlyQuest and Spyrax, I was asking for them to make a play around them. It was COG making a play onto Spyrax. He was misplaying uh, that in, in the bot lane against Jenkins, but he gets saved as we're gonna take a second look. Uh, that him eating that barrel, not dropping the wind wall, was a big mistake. As, oh my God, that's like a 2K unit jump. As Rosethorn, then all of a sudden he's got a Yasuo on him. That's not where you want to be. Yasuo on him has no one to take down to uh, get the revive. Woo, that was just good play coming out, and just Spyrax, how quickly he was able to uh, pick up on that knockup, and as he said, like 2K units away. My goodness. Yeah. Keeps him alive and keeps FlyQuest uh, in a position of power. Yeah, Spyrax, uh, they saw COG sending some members over for that Korean boot camp. and said, I will raise you my Maryville University boot camp. As that is where he spent his offseason. Uh, playing on like, like 15 ping, I think you get, he said you get from Maryville. That's that's pretty damn good. It's very nice. Makes Hanging out with his old collegiate team. Best. Yeah. Fortunately for Maryville, it was a uh, only a top four finish this year, but... I will say that was the true final. I think that ended up being proven true. There's now Diamond, hoping his dredge lines land true, but Rose Thorn able to sneak out. And it will be both monster objectives spawning here in a buck 10 and a buck 25 Deserex. As we'll see if FlyQuest can utilize this 1-3-1 to stretch things out a little bit. Maybe net themselves one of these objectives for free. I'm curious what CLG are going to do here. Um, both of the timers yeah. coming in. Uh, Dragon will be up. Baron will be up. Both of those very high value for the squad, uh, especially considering Dragon's soul would be taken if CLG are able to get this next one. 
Still a minute, and that's why FlyQuest are kind of playing around this top side. They want to complete all their objectives over here. Complete grabbing this tower, but unable to oh, lock down just yet. Here comes the engage. Looking to go through, trying to lock Tomo. down onto Tomo. Tomo's completely isolated here. Tomo trying to get away. He still has his flash, but he's burning down. Will burn the flash after getting enough life still off of the minion. CLG are continuing the dead. pursuit, though. They're continuing the chase, and Rose Thorn is too fast. Oh Tomo my God. gets shut down. Jenkins has just been a hero this game in the later stages, Deserex. I know it. he was put down early, but man, some of these barrels have been so big Run as... Back, that's a massive death. Tomo now is dead 40 seconds before the... Uh, 40 seconds till he's out of his death chamber. We, we got 20 seconds till Ocean Soul for CLG, and that was all made by Jenkins just connecting with three huge barrels. Jenkins being the hero in the late stages of this, now looking to find another oh, pick. No. Going after the Tomo, and here we go. The Rose Thorn able to hop in, he gets one Breezy. kill Cyclone, gonna go off, but Meech is still in the back line, popping off those Mystic shots, and taking names! Meech will grab another one as CLG, eviscerate FlyQuest. And FlyQuest opting into a 4v5, I, I guess they found Meech, but uh, again... I guess they think that Ocean Soul, if that goes over to CLG, it's not a winnable scenario. I still think FlyQuest have ga ways to win this game, even with Ocean Soul now on CLG's shoulders. And I gotta say, again, Breezy, his ultimates, the hostile takeovers, have been so huge this game against FlyQuest as he landed another giant one there to help make sure CLG had the fight go in their favor. Of course, the inability to lock down Meech, he's just so slippery. A lot of these fights, putting out those Mystic Shots, getting that damage in, and now he's getting even harder to take down as that Frozen Heart is completed. CLG starting up the Baron. Yuji, he's within the area, but I don't think he's going to make this chance again. Still waiting for the cooldown. Doesn't have Flash available. Triple over the wall, has the Gold Card. Just waiting for Yuji to get close enough so he can stun him up. He could also use the Destiny Gate to make sure that the Stealth is not going to go through. Oh, they don't flip it. popped. Wow. Yeah, they're not going to go for the wow. first time. They're paying respects to Yuji. Like to see COG learning from some of their mistakes. As I, I, I think that COG, again, believes that if they have Ocean Soul, they win this. I that, That's got to be what's going through COG's heads right now. Mm. Uh, and honestly, FlyQuest too. Uh, the fact they took that 4v5, I, I believe they view Ocean Soul as the game breaker uh, on both sides. And we'll see if that ends up ringing true. Because for COG... This siege now with Ezreal is going to be so incredibly deadly against the side of FlyQuest. As FlyQuest are going to try and start up this Baron. Jenkins would just spot a bot. He does have the TP. We'll see how quick he can get here. Is that's a big Ezreal ult already. Ooh, oh my barrage. goodness. Lots of damage coming in. Teleport going to be channeled out of Tomo's Jenkins. An angle. Look at Tomo. Tomo's getting Look at low Tomo. right there. Breezy's looking for the oh angle. God. He's looking for a way in. Hostile takeover. The flash comes out. Windwald. Wind Diamond gets taken down by Meech. He's able to find another Mystic Shot Gold card. No Windwald. He's going to be able to land onto Spyrax. The damage coming in so big as Rose Thorn assassinates the back line. Able to get in onto Tomo. Another pill. Another kill for Triple. Now Kumo on the run. Triple will hunt him down. And with the backing of CLG, the rest of the squad come together and drop. Drop fly quest taking the baron taking the fight taking everything they need <laughs> to take this game one and clg uh, shout out to breezy 3 0 and 20 on this renata was always in the right place at the right time massive game massive hostile takeovers from him as uh, this cop uh, between the gold cards just being able to slow down these fights and the hostile takeover was making sure that fly quest could never truly get that big engage where they take off a member out of the fight first. Tomo couldn't do anything this game against Jenkins uh, and Triple with the GP and the TF. Just way too much control from CLG. I, I guess once FlyQuest fell behind, they couldn't get the gold to pop a member from CLG. I don't think they played towards the side lanes as much as they could have either. CLG looking set to take this one. Ocean Soul plus Baron. That's the magic combo. Just waiting for that final push to come out of CLG as... All it took was a couple of team fights, a couple of missteps coming out from FlyQuest. Both of these teams have yeah. been giving uh, a little bit here and there to each other, but CLG uh, not making the bigger misstep this time. Meech with his positioning, Breezy with a lot of these hostile takeovers, is now putting CLG in the position to set up this siege 37 minutes into this one. They're running down the mid lane with Baron and Ocean Soul. Yeah, it's been a, t a really tough game for Tomo. I, it, it is a tough ask, especially yeah. when you fall behind on Kaisa to play in the GP plus Twisted Fate. But uh, it feels like all these fights have started when Tomo is already at half health 
for the side of CLG. Because they're just, again, utilizing the poke, utilizing the control they have so well. And now this is where it's just the doomsday scenario for FlyQuest. Because you want Vladimir and Yasuo to play in these side lanes to get priority. And then you use that to make uh, plays where you have the numbers advantage. They can't side lane anymore. CLG are too far ahead. They have a Baron. They have Ocean Soul. You can't force them out. So FlyQuest now has to go for something dire. We'll see what they end up finding. They're trying to find that Wombo. If they can get that with the last breath Cyclone. Something big can happen for FlyQuest, but they need the perfect conditions. That's the big problem right now for FlyQuest. This gold lead that's been acquired by CLG. Now looking to focus into the mid lane. They grab the inhibitor. Now towards the top lane where Triple guides another wave to crash into the tower. Diamond going for the engage. Look at the knockup. Out comes the hostile takeover. Jenkins on the side will pick up one. Now Kumo goes deep with the Hemo Plague. Kumo. Followed along with the Cyclone trying to take down Meech, but Meech is still alive. Finally gets dropped by Yuji, but it took ages and FlyQuest have nothing left to take out the remaining members of CLG. Just have to run away. Another pick coming out. A double kill for Triple S. CLG look to close out game number one. Tomo will be able to reset. Kumo, Kumo is still up, but CLG, I think they've done everything they needed to do to make sure this game went their way. As I know the 0-2 uh, against 100 Thieves is not the result they wanted yesterday, but a nice bounce back against a team that is tied for first in the standings to kick off our day today. Victory for CLG Academy, and what a display, I want to say, towards the bottom lane, Cubby. Uh, for Meech and Breezy. I, I I don't want to just say Meech this time, because Breezy, you kept pointing him out. The hostile takeovers, the ultimates he was They're able huge. to pull off really clutch CLG. Yeah, I, I think that third dragon, uh, got to go back and watch that, as it really feels like that hostile takeover was game-changing. And then, honestly, credit to Jenkins, too. This guy was put behind so far, right? uh, thanks to the, the attention that Yuji, that FlyQuest were pay, uh, paying towards that matchup early. Jenkins came back in that game, and was far more effective than the Vladimir that had the resources. The barrels he was connecting, that's what got Kumo caught out in the top, or Tomo caught out in the top side, thanks to the barrels. That's what almost made that play work bot against Spyrax, even though it didn't. I think it was still a really nice setup from Jenkins. And every team fight, it just felt like Meech, Jenkins were taking Tomo to half health, to below half health before the fight even started. And COG won every fight from there. So really, really well played by COG. We were asking for them to patch up their mid to late game. That was a patched up mid the way came from them. They were phenomenal at those stages. Really good stuff from them. Yeah, but that was a war between these two squads as it was back and forth. It was bloody. No one was in the 42 kills. Least. Until yeah. the very end of that, I, I, I want to take a look. 39 minutes that game was. What a banger. But we do have another game coming up. So we're going to throw it over to short intermission. When we come back, we'll have Pyro with us to have a little fun, have a, have a good time as we wait for game number two.